Hey everyone, today we're diving into the world of intermittent fasting. Ever felt like you're on a never-ending quest to shed those pesky pounds, only to be bamboozled by diets more complex than solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded behind your back? Well, have no fear. The 16-8 fasting method might just be the no-brainer solution you've been searching for. It's like the cheat code to weight loss and wellness that you never knew you needed. So you're here, possibly with a mix of curiosity and skepticism, wondering if this could be the golden ticket to your wellness journey, right? Buckle up, because we're about to embark on a crash course that promises not just to enlighten, but also to entertain. We're breaking down the 16-8 intermittent fasting into five simple steps, ensuring you start on the right foot, and more importantly, avoid face planting right at the starting line. Stick around and let's crack the code to making intermittent fasting a walk in the park. All right, let's dive into the magical realm of 16-8 intermittent fasting and how it works, shall we? Picture a diet plan that doesn't require you to perform mental gymnastics when trying to figure out what and when to eat. Sounds like a dream, right? Well, pinch yourself because it's real, and it's called the 16-8 method. Here's the lowdown. Imagine your day sliced into two chunks. In one chunk, you have an eight-hour window where you can eat your meals and snacks like it's a food festival and you're the guest of honor. Now the other chunk, that's your 16-hour fasting fiesta, where the only guests allowed are unsweetened drinks like water, tea, or your trusty old friend, coffee. Why jump on this fasting bandwagon, you might ask? Well, not only is it a ticket to weight lossville, but it's also a golden pass to improved health land, boasting perks like better blood sugar levels, a sharper brain, and potentially a longer life to enjoy all those benefits. Plus, it's as flexible as a contortionist at a circus. You pick your eating window. Fancy lunch at noon and wrapping up dinner by 8 p.m.? Perfect, you're already on your way to becoming a fasting aficionado, skipping breakfast and cruising through till lunch. The beauty of 16A lies in its simplicity. No need to count calories like you're crunching numbers for NASA. It's about timing, not torment. However, let's not sugarcoat it. It might seem like a jigsaw puzzle at first, but don't worry, we're here to help you put all the pieces together. So stick with me as we unravel the mysteries of making 16-8 intermittent fasting a breeze. Onward to step two. So you've embarked on this 16-8 intermittent fasting journey and surprise, surprise, you're feeling hungrier than a bear waking up from hibernation. Let's be real, the hunger pains are going to hit you like a truck at first. Your body, much like a stubborn toddler, is used to being fed on demand and doesn't quite understand this whole fasting business yet. Imagine your stomach as a pet that needs a bit of training. At first, it's going to whimper and beg for treats at all hours, but with a bit of patience and perseverance, you'll have it performing tricks in no time. That's right, after a short adjustment period of about three to five days, your body will start to get the hang of not diving into the cookie jar every few hours. The pro tip here is to keep yourself as busy as a bee. Dive into work, pick up a hobby, or maybe start building that model ship you've been putting off. The key is distraction. If your mind is occupied, it'll send those hunger signals packing. Remember, boredom is the snack devil's playground. When you're bored, that's when the munchies start whispering sweet nothings in your ear, tempting you to stray from your fasting path. But not today, munchies. Not today. So buckle up, stay busy, and remember every great change starts with discomfort. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Now let's navigate these hunger pains together and come out on the other side as fasting pros. Alright team, let's talk about H2O, your new BFF during the 16-8 intermittent fasting saga. You've heard it a million times, drink more water. But let's be honest, most of us treat water like that one friend we forget to text back until we're desperately thirsty or trying to swallow a mouthful of peanut butter. When you're fasting though, water isn't just a good idea, it's your lifeline. Think of water as the ultimate cleaner upper for your insides. It swoops in like a superhero, flushing out toxins and keeping your internal systems running smoother than a freshly oiled skateboard. But here's the kicker. Guzzling water also tricks your stomach into thinking it's getting what it wants, food, when really, it's just staying hydrated. Ever find yourself standing in front of the fridge, thinking you're hungry, when you're really just bored or thirsty? Yeah, we've all been there. Drinking water is like a secret weapon against those sneaky false hunger alarms. So how much water should you be drinking? Aim for at least eight glasses a day. Kickstart your morning with a glass of water to wake up your body and make it a ritual to have one before each meal. Just like that, you've nailed half your daily quota without even trying. Before you know it, sipping on water will become second nature, like scrolling through your phone but way healthier for you. So let's raise a glass of water to staying hydrated and making our fasting journey a splash. Let's talk about the elephant in the room when it comes to 16-8 intermittent fasting, the eat whatever your heart desires myth. You've probably heard the siren call. Go ahead, treat yourself. You're fasting after all. But let's be real. Turning every meal into an all-you-can-eat buffet of your wildest cravings is like giving a teenager a credit card and saying, 
spend wisely. Yes, the beauty of 16A intermittent fasting is its flexibility. You don't have to say goodbye to your beloved burger forever. However, if you start romancing the drive through window a little too often during your eating hours, don't be shocked if your results decide to break up with you. The thing is, while 16A doesn't hand you a list of banned foods, it's kind of implied that scarfing down junk food isn't the way to victory. Think of it this way. Your body is like a fancy car. Sure, it might run on cheap fuel, but if you want it to purr like a kitten and shine like a diamond, you've got to give it that premium stuff. Aim for a diet that's like a blockbuster hit. Lots of veggies, lean proteins, whole grains, and those good fats that make you feel full and fabulous. It's all about balance. Ensuring your meals are satisfying and nutritious is key to making it through your fasting window without eyeing the fridge every five minutes or dreaming of donuts. Bottom line, indulging in your favorite treats is totally fine, but remember, moderation is your best friend. If you find yourself fantasizing about your next meal because you didn't eat enough or well enough, you're setting yourself up for a fasting misstep. Let's keep those cravings in check and your fasting on track. Have you ever found yourself in the dark, cozy embrace of a movie theater seat right after your eating window with a sudden overwhelming urge to demolish a bucket of popcorn and down a cola the size of a small canoe? Oh, you too? Well, welcome to the club. I think we've all felt this way before. So embarking on the 16A intermittent fasting journey is like turning on a spotlight on your eating habits, illuminating some snacky behaviors you might not have noticed before. Picture this, you're a cereal snacker, always munching in front of the TV after dinner. But by drawing a line in the sand, or in this case, setting a fasting boundary at 7 p.m., you're effectively putting those late night snack raids to bed. You might struggle at first, but soon the bad habit will turn into a good habit and you won't even crave those things anymore, or at least as often. But wait, there's a plot twist. The solution to sidestepping these snack traps isn't just about willpower. It's about, wait for it, getting more Z's. Yes, diving under the covers earlier than usual isn't just for kindergartners. It's a grown-up strategy for dodging cravings, reviving up your metabolism, and enhancing those weight loss efforts. And there's more. Hitting the hay at a decent hour on the regular isn't just good for your waistline. It's like a chill pill for your stress levels. In the wild world of biology, stress is like a green light for your body to start hoarding fat like a squirrel with acorns. Less stress for more sleep means that your body gets the memo that it's okay to let go of some of that storage. So the moral of the story? Snack attacks during your fasting period can be a real menace. But the secret weapon against them might just be your pillow. Embrace a steady sleep schedule and you'll be saying night-night to those cravings and hello to a happier, healthier you. Now go get some shut-eye. All right, team, it's time to wrap this up with a bow. Just remember, once dinner's done, treat your kitchen like a trendy nightclub and don't let anyone, especially yourself, back in. Embrace your bed like it's a long-lost friend, ensuring you get plenty of beauty sleep. Make sure your meals are like treasure chests of nutrients, hearty enough to sail you smoothly to your next fasting island. Trust me, stick to this game plan and you're going to start seeing some pretty sweet changes, not just on the scale, but in how you feel overall, like upgrading from a flip phone to the latest smartphone. Thanks a million for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed this little chat, smash the like button, leave a comment with your thoughts or any fasting sagas you've got, and hit subscribe to stay in the loop. And hey, keep flexing those healthy habits and glowing with that inner wellness sparkle. Catch you on the flip side.